That's why we are here today. To say, you are my God. Amen. Amen. You are my God. What we celebrate today, it's, uh, it's the greatest event in history, isn't it? Amen. Amen. What could be greater than the fact that the Creator Himself came to us? When I see His creation, the vastness of space, <coughs> the, the mind-boggling number of the galaxies, mm -hmm. and the Earth is just a tiny bit, tiny dust <coughs> suspended in air in the middle of, not at the center, some corner of the universe. It's not even the center of the universe, not even I mean, our galaxy itself is not the center. The, the, the universe. We just somewhere, the tiny corner somewhere. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. Even though we are just tiny, tiny bit of dust somewhere in the vastness of his creation to show the magnitude of his greatness, how, how incredible, how mind-boggling, how, how unfathomable his greatness is. This tiny corner, tiny dust, dust he loved us so much and he gave us his all. <coughs> that's our God. And that's, that's my God. God. That's my God. That's yeah. your God. Yeah. That's your God. God. That's your Don't God. Don't make me mistake, God. Think about it. How tiny, infinitesimal tiny you are. Mm -hmm. Later than you, the earth you live in. You know, it, it's just, it, it's unbelievable. And <laughs> have you seen, have you seen uh, the, uh, the galaxies and the stars in video, in, in films? It's so unbelievable. And you know, all the war that has ever happened in the universe happened in this tiny dust only. Mm -hmm. All the hatred, the anger, the envy, friction, mm -hmm. you know, all the sin, all the denial of God, all the selfishness happened on this tiny, tiny dust. But in his, he is love, isn't it? That's how he described himself. There is no any other word. In our in human language that would describe him. He is love. And he loved us so much, not in anything that who we are, in his nature, he's a loving father. We portrayed him in in you know in many ways. We we portrayed him as wrathful, vengeful you know, angry God, who he is not, he's a loving father. Mm -hmm. He's a loving father and he loved us so much and he gave us himself. He gave us himself. When he introduced his name, I am who I am. That's how he introduced his name. The first time someone asked him, what's your name? Moses asked him, what's your name? I am who I am. Which implies, I can be who you want me to be for you. <laughs> yes, 
I, want, I can be, what do you make of me? What do you want me to be? I can be that. For he is limitless. He is, he cannot be contained. So you make me what you want me to be. You decide. You choose. You choose who do you want me to be in your life. And so today, we are gathered here to say, God, you are my God. You know, the weather is not, is not pleasant today. We could have stayed in the, in, the, in the comfort of our home. But we came out to say, God, I, I will worship you. I will say thank you for me, for my life, for my family, for my children, together with the brother and sister and I will be in your house. And I will say, I will show by my action, by what I do, that you are my God. Amen. And so the way he chose to come to this world, he could have come surrounded by numberless angels in, 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 a, in a fire of chariot, in a, in a chariot of fire, you know, with trumpets, um, and all uh, indescribable glory. No, that's not our God. Do you see his heart? How, how God thinks? He chose the lowest of the lowly. He chose a small nation. While there were great empires at the time. He chose the smallest, one of the smallest nations. And, and who were slaves? of other nations and he chose to come in not even in human house in cattle house mm -hmm. he chose to sleep in a manger what what does this say to you the God that we cannot even grasp his glory and his greatness that, that's one extreme, and the way he chooses is so low, so nobody, no, no, no human being chooses to, to be born, you know, in a stable, in a cattle stable, and to sleep in a manger. It's by choice. It was his choice. He could have decided to come any other time, any other place. God sent His Son in the fullness of time, says the Bible, in the, at the right time and He came. So God loved the world. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. So when I think of God, the first image that has to come to me is God is love. That's how he described or expressed himself. Mm -hmm. Love and he gave. Love and giving. To love and to give. That's our God. Mm -hmm. To love and to give, to love, irrespective of, irrespective of the personality of the recipient of our love, irrespective of who the person may be, to love, that's how God, to, our God loves and gives. And he gave us himself. Isaiah says, thinking about this day. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. So God loved, God gave. And Jesus, who is God, came down to us in that way, in a way that, uh, that's so, so unbelievable. He 
brought himself down to the lowest level and he dwelt among us. John tells us the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God loved, God came, God stayed with us, God lived. He didn't just come to visit us, he dwelt among us. It's easy to say God, God came. Have you thought about that? God came to us. How did he choose? How did he come? Philippians chapter 2, 5 and 7 tells us, Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant, a slave, and coming in the likeness of me. So, if I paraphrase it, this is what Paul is saying. God, the Lord Jesus, he is, who is God, who is co-equal with God, he didn't consider his divinity as something to grasp onto, as if somebody is taking away from him. He didn't, he didn't consider it something to cling onto, but he chose to give it up and take the form of a slave. He is in the form of divinity. He is God. He didn't abandon his divinity when he came to, to, to earth. He was divine. He was God. But he took the form. There is a word form, form twice in this verse. His essence has not changed. His inner constituency has not changed. He is divine. But took up the form. In other words, in other words, it means Jesus Christ, although he is co-equal with God, his essence has not changed. He's, he's divine, but he changed his form and took the likeness of a man and took the form of a slave. This majestic, glorious God, though his divinity is untouchable, he chose to put it, put it off and put on the form of a slave. The form has changed. The essence has not changed. The essence is he is God. The form, how he presented himself, how he showed up in earth, the form, the outside structure changed. He came in the form of a slave. Why does he do that? He's teaching us a lesson. So I asked God, how do you want us to celebrate this Christian, uh, this uh, Christmas season? God told me, do what I did. And so this is what I'm going to share. Do what I did. What did he? God loved. It's a time to love, to share love. God gave his only, one and only. It's a time to share. Even the only one we have. That's how we worship him. That's how we glorify him and say, you are my God. When I say you are my God, he expects me to express that faith in my life by sharing, by giving, even the one that I have. God love. It's a time to love. God gave. It's a time to give. God gave his time. He said, the, the scripture says, he dwell among us. It's time to give time for us. To take time to stay with them. How we Christians, how do we celebrate this Christmas? We don't celebrate it the way other people do. 
No, we don't celebrate it the way people who do not know God do. We celebrate it by loving, by giving, by giving the most, the, the, the most valuable that we have, by sharing, by giving time. <coughs> Time for our family members. Time for those who do not have no one to give them time. Sharing our time. How did the world receive him when he came? How did the world receive this, this God? It, I, I say the greatest event of history is the fact that God came to the earth. Even though not many people know about it. It's not man walking on the moon. It's not man going to the space. These are not the greatest events of history, although they are very great in their own uh, way. It's not the war time or the peace time. The greatest event of history is our Creator came to us. How was he received? Matthew gave us the account of, of the high society when Jesus, when Jesus was born. Matthew's account shows you how Jesus' birth impacted the palace, Herod, the temple, the Pharisees, the scholars, the scribes, and the Magi, the wise men. But Luke goes a different way. He shows us how Jesus' coming impacted the lowly, the average, the lowest rank of society, the shepherds. The angel, when describing the coming of Jesus Christ, didn't choose to go to the palace to declare. Didn't go to the temple. He chose the shepherds that who lived far away outside in the country alone and he declared mm. the great news, the good news that gives joy to everyone. And that these shepherds were far away, you know, outside the city, poor people, they became the first evangelists mm. in talking about the king, the Born, the, the baby born king. Mm -hmm. They became the first evangelists. God also chose us in this season, in this area. We were like those shepherds who were far away. God came to us, revealed his coming mm -hmm. to us. And we follow these evangelists, these shepherds, to declare his goodness. Mm -hmm. How did uh, the world receive him when God came? Let me read uh, Luke's account. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, betrothed, betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. God came, but man didn't have a room for him. <coughs> God came because God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. Remember? He was not received. There was no room for him. 
Do you think this happened only once? No. Why are we few here? Because man still <coughs> doesn't have room for him. Man has room for entertainment. Man has room for sin. Man has always room or makes room for the pleasure of the flesh. Man has always room for anything that he or she desires. And so there was no room. So he went to the cattle stable because there was no room. And that's a very symbolical thing that shows the nature of our heart. And so when we celebrate this, this, uh, this Christmas, let's celebrate it by making room. More room. How do we make room for Jesus? When we go to heaven, the scripture says, Come, you righteous of my Father. Come, inherit the kingdom of the Father prepared for you. For you have visited me when I was in prison, fed me when I was hungry. You gave me water when I was thirsty. And the righteous say, Where did we meet you? When you do it to the least of Hallelujah. those who believe in me, you have done it to me. Yes. Can we make more room? This is how we worship him. This is how we say, you are my God. When I make room to his fellow, to the neighbor, Amen. to my family members, but also to those who do not have love, who do not have anyone to support. Can we go out of ourselves? Can we live what we need, what we want to have? This is, this is a frantic season. People want to give, give, give oh, what, what am I getting, what am I getting? Who is going to give me the best? Oh, oh, it's me, 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 me. Can we go out of that and focus on others? What do I have that I can give? God gave time. He dwells among us. Can we give time? Can we make room to give time? Oh, may the Holy Spirit sink this into our heart. Lord, I worship you. I will show that you are my God. By giving my time to someone who needs it, by making room in my life, you see, the Magi, they gave him frankincense, myrrh, and gold, what they have. God never said, give me frankincense, God give me myrrh, but he said, my child, Give me your heart. Let's make room for him in our heart. Let's make time. When we go from this house, make sure that we dialogue with ourselves. Oh God, whom do you want me to give my time? How do you want me to make more room for you? More room for the things of God. More room for the word of God. More room in my life for brothers and sisters in Christ. More room to the needy that way. His people worship him that way. Amen? Amen. Oh, may God help us. I'm ch challenging myself. Let me make more room in my heart for God. Amen.
the greatest event of history is not the pyramids. It's not the Chinese war, or the great wars, or Yuri Gagarin in space, or Louis Armstrong walking on the moon. Though these and many others were great historical episodes, the greatest event in human history is the fact that the supreme being we call God came in human form and dwelt among us. Today, the majority of Muslims do not believe that man walked on the moon. Many tribal communities in Asia, Africa, and in the Amazon jungle have not heard of World War I or World War II. They have neither heard of the pyramids, the Chinese wall, or Louis Armstrong. However, these events are not contingent <coughs> on people's awareness or acceptance of their reality. Facts are facts, irrespective of others' opinion on them. Likewise, although the greatest event of history, the God, that God has come in human form and dwelt among us, is a fact, millions of people do not believe it. This truth is also not contingent to popular belief or the lack of it. It's interesting that this truth is not revealed to the wise and the able. Not many scholars, nobilities, and religious leaders realize that Jesus of Nazareth was God in human flesh. Yet many of the downtrodden, many of the downtrodden folk, shepherds, fishermen, prostitutes, Tax collectors, whom the Bible says sinners, criminals, blinds, Gentiles, whom the Jews call dogs, the Magi, whose background is sorcery and magic, and little children came to know the King of the Jews, whom the prophets called the Messiah, was born in Bethlehem. Let me quote Jesus. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Matthew 11, 25. Shepherds got it. Herod the king didn't get it. Sinful tax collect collectors got it. Righteous <coughs> Pharisees didn't get it. Illiterate fishermen got it. Temple scholars called scribes, didn't get it. The Magi who came from far away land got it, but Seyafas, the high priest, and his Sadducee group didn't get it. Prostitutes got it, but zealous Pharisees lost it. Jesus said, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. Matthew 21, 31. In the same fashion, we, the lowly of the world, knew the significance of what happened in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. God was born in a dark, dirty, and stinky stable. He slept on a manger, as has never been in history. No leader was born in such humiliating way. God, who created the universe, was born in a dark, dirty, and stinky place to show us that the misery of human condition out of which he came to redeem us. Amen. That dark, dirty, and stinky place is my heart. He is the light of the world which shines inside my dark heart. Your dark heart. As Isaiah foretold, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. Matthew 4, 16. Jesus was not only born in that dark stable, he is also born in our dark hearts. Today, as we celebrate his birthday, we are also acknowledging that he <coughs> born inside our dark hearts. He has become the light in our souls. As the scriptures say, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face, in the face of Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate Jesus of Nazareth, who is born inside our hearts. Merry Christmas. Amen. Merry Christmas.
Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now Emmanuel and Theo will give us beautiful Christmas carols. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. 